Good day, grade 10 students. We are now on the fourth week of our online discussion in Mathematics 10. For this week, we are going to discuss Lesson 4, which is about word problems involving sequence and series. Here is the learning competency you need to achieve or master at the end of this week. Solve problems involving sequences. This means it includes word problems which involves both arithmetic sequence and geometric sequence. Tips on how to solve word problems. Step 1. Identify the problem. Begin by determining the scenario the problem wants you to solve. In this case, for lesson number 4, the step number 1 uh, pertains to identifying if the given problem is under or involves a geometric sequence or an arithmetic sequence. Step 2, gather information. In gathering information, we are going to identify the given and what is to be solved or what are to be identified. Step 3, create an equation. For step number 3, we need to create an equation but it will be much easier or a bit easier because uh, I am going to give you the list of all the formulas under the arithmetic and geometric sequence. Step 4, solve the problem. In solving the problem, you just need to follow the PEMDAS rule, parenthesis, exponent, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction, or the so-called order of operations. Step 5, verify the answer. After finding the final answer, it is much better or it is advisable for you to perform the checking or verifying your answer so that you will be on a 100% accuracy or 100% sure that your answer, from uh, the answer that you gain from solving the problem is the right answer. Okay, let's continue. Formulas related to arithmetic and geometric sequences in series. For the red orb or the first set, it's all about arithmetic sequence and series. The first formula is for finding the common difference. D is equals to a sub n minus a sub n minus 1. Second formula, nth term of an, arithm an, of an arithmetic sequence without determining the previous terms is a sub n is equal to a sub n plus n minus 1 times d. The next, the, the next formula under arithmetic sequence and series is the formula for finding the arithmetic series. So s sub n is equals to n divided by 2 times 2 times a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. In the blue orb or the second set of formulas, these are the formulas under the geometric sequences and series. The first formula here is for, for finding the common ratio. To find the common ratio, R is equals to A sub N plus 1 divided by A sub N. A sub N plus 1 class is the succeeding term divided by A sub N which, which is the preceding term. The next formula is the nth term. Of a, of a geometric sequence. So, erase ko lang ito. It should be up in the end. So, nth term of a geometric sequence without finding or determining the previous term is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to n minus 1. The next formula is finite geometric series. So, s sub n is equal to a sub 1 times 1 minus r raised to n divided by 1 minus r. Then the other formula is, it for the formula for infinite geometric series, so s infinity is equals to a sub 1 divided by 1 minus r. So in these two sets of formula, again, the red or, or in the first set of formula are the formulas under the arithmetic sequence in series. And on the blue orb or the second formula, the formula under or the under the geometric sequences and series. So let's compare the two sets of formula. The common difference and the common ratio 
is the same for the case of the terms that we need here or the given that we need we need here for us to be able to use the formula are two consecutive terms. It means yung terms from the sequence, either arithmetic or geometric sequence, dapat consecutive term siya. For example, uh, yung gagamitin natin sa pag-find ng common difference or ng common ratio is the first term or the second term, the a sub 1 or the a sub 2. Hindi pa pwedeng yung a sub 1 at a sub 5 yung i-partner natin kasi hindi sila consecutive terms. Isang requirement sa pag-identify ng two terms na gagamitin for finding the common difference or the common ratio should be consecutive terms or magkasunod na terms sa sequence. Next one is the nth term of an arithmetic sequence and the nth term of a geometric sequence. So, in this case, class same sila ng situation. Hindi na natin kailangan hanapin yung previous terms kasi nga itong formula is finding the nth term without uh, needing the previous terms. Also, yung kailangan natin dito yeah, yung method of solving is uh, re, uh, very different kasi dito kay arithmetic sequence class addition lang, then subtract, multiplication. Dito naman sa kabila, yun nga, yung kailangan dito is common ratio, sa kabila is common difference. Then dito tayo kay arithmetic series. Kay arithmetic series kasi class, yung formula for, uh, it's either, uh, ano siya, uh, finite or infinite geometric se uh, arithmetic sequence yung given, the same lang yung formula na gagamitin. Pero kailangan nga dapat ma-identify muna yung given which is above, which is the a sub 1, the n, and the d. Pero kay geometric sequence, we have two, se uh, two sets of formula under finite geometric series pero isa lang yung linis ko, yung mas accurate or mas madaling gamitin na formula, this one. Then we have a separate formula for the infinite geometric series. Ito yung formula niya. So you can copy this in a one-fourth sheet uh, or in a one-fourth index card. Para pag nag-result kayo, doon na lang kayo titingin or pwede yung screenshot dito sa video yung itong set of formulas. So, dyan na lang yung sabuk nyo nga i-hanapin, hahanapin. Okay? Let's continue. So, in this part, we are now going to apply the step-by-step -step process of solving word problems or the tips and the formulas that I just gave you from the last slide. So, let's solve. For example, number one, we are going to solve or I uh, analyze first the problem bago natin siya solve and ma-identify yung final answer. So let's read the problem. As part of a marketing strategy in a grocery store, the cans of evaporated milk are arranged in a pyramid with 15 cans on the first layer and one can last on the higher layer. This pattern is followed until there is one can left on the peak of the stock. How many cans of milk are used? So, let's analyze the problem. So, identify muna natin kung under ba siya ni arithmetic sequence or ni geometric sequence. Kasi pag na-identify natin siya doon, mas madali na lang yung paghanap ng formula na kailangan sa problem. So, we have here, okay, the first given here is 15 cans on the first layer. It means the first layer pertains to the first term. So, we have 15. And another clue, one can less on the higher layer. As long na tumataas yung ating pyramid or, or yung stocks ng ano, uh, uh, can, evaporated milk can, nagbabawa siya ng one can. It means pag second layer natin, one can less, magiging 14 pieces of cans na lang sa second layer. Then pagka third layer natin, or that, magiging 13 cans na lang kasi one can less on the higher layer. This pattern is followed to this one lang. Okay, mag-stop lang yung pag-stack natin ng cans. Kung yung nasa pinakatuktok na is one can left na lang. So, based from this information na one can less on the higher layer, as long na tumataas siya, bumabawas, siya lang, bumabawas lang siya ng isang can, we can easily uh, conclude that this given, form, uh, this given problem is under the arithmetic sequence. Dahil under siya arithmetic sequence, kailangan na lang natin identify which formula ba yung kailangan natin gamitin? So, here is the problem. How many cans of milk are used? So, ilang piraso ba ng cans of milk yung nagamit para mabuo yung pyramid? So, based from the word how many cans of milk are used, it means it pertains to the total number of cans which, which is related to the arithmetic series. Kasi si arithmetic series class, we are identifying the total uh or the sum of the uh, number of terms, specific number of terms. So, dito, 
Anam, alamin natin, ano ba yung specific or total number of cans yung kailangan or nakabuo para ma magawa yung buong pyramid. So, ang kailangan pa natin identify how many layers pa siya. So, later, let's analyze. Here's the solution. Here's the solution. For the solution, again, class nga, given na yung A sub 1, which is 15, then, dahil nga arithmetic sequence yung ating susolve, then specifically, yung formula na gagamitin natin tas the arithmetic series, based from the formula of the arithmetic series, tignan nyo dyan sa list nyo or dun sa screenshot nyo, kailangan natin yung common difference. So, for us to be able to find the common difference, let's, let's get a given of two consecutive terms. So, given na si A sub 1. Yung A sub 2, hindi siya given sa problem, pero may clue kung paano ma-identify. Ito yung clue natin. One can lessen the higher layer. So, we can easily assume that the A sub 2 or the second layer is equals to 14 kasi one can less nga. Dahil nakuha na natin yung A sub 1 at A sub 2, yung first two terms, let's use now the formula for finding the common difference. So, D is equals to A sub 2 minus A sub 1. Then, substitute the values to the formula. It will be D is equals to 14 minus 15. So, the common difference is equal to negative 1. So, after finding the common difference class, let's list now the given which are needed for using or for us to be able to use the formula for the arithmetic series which is needed para malaman natin yung sagot sa question na how many cans of milk are used. So, here's the given A sub 1 is equals to 15. So, given as a problem, next one is the common difference which is equals to 1 or negative 1. The next one is n is equals to 15. Bakit ba nasabi natin na yung n is equals to 15? Kasi class, from 15, di ba 15 cans yung first layer, magka-count kayo till ma-reach natin yung, uh, yung uh, pinaka-peak ng ad stock ng ating pyramid which is equal to 1 can left. So from 15, 14, 13, 12, mag-count kayo. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 40 to 1. Kung i-count nyo yung pag-counting uh, pag nyo from 15 to 1, nakabuo kayo ng 15. It means we have a 15-layer pyramid. Dito na uh, bubuuhin na composed ng cans of evaporated milk. That's why yung N natin is equal to 15, which pertains to the 15-layer na pyramid. So after ma-identify yung 3 given na kailangan para magamit yung formula ng arithmetic series, so, i-copy na natin yung formula. After copying the formula class, let's substitute the values. So, it will become S of 15 is equal to 15 divided by 2 times 2 times 15 plus 15 minus 1 times negative 1. Then, just apply the PEMDAS rule. Yun nga yung sabi ko sa si step 4, PEMDAS rule lang yung gagamitin class. So, dito muna tayo mag-start sa loob ng bracket. So, ito yung bracket class. So, yung nasa loob niya muna yung sub natin. I-apply ulit natin si PEMDAS rule. So, yung una mo dito yung sa sub class is itong 15 minus 1 and yung 2 times 15. So, yung kalabasan niya magiging S of 15 is equal to 15 divided by 2. 2 times 15, the answer is 30. Plus 15 minus 1, the answer is 14 times negative 1. After that, eh, sa loob ng parent, uh, bracket natin, meron pang kailangan isolve. So, i-apply natin yung multiplication kasi wala namang equation. Yung sa parenthesis, yung sa loob ng parenthesis na 14, simplified na siya. So, mag-multiplication na tayo. So, 14 times negative 1, the result will be as uh, so of 15 is equal to 15 divided by 2, 30 plus negative 14. Then, isolve na natin yung two terms inside the bracket. So, it will be as of 15 is equals to 15 divided by 2 times 16. So, yung gagawin nyo dito, just multiply 16 to the numerator na 15. So, 16 times 15, the answer is 240. Then, divided by 2, S of 15 is equals to 120. Or, 120 cans. Yung uh, specify natin. Or, ito yung conclusion. The number of cans used is 120. So, this, uh, that's all for the example number one. Then, for example number two, here is the problem. Let's read. The value of an old Philippine peso bill appreciates by 5% every year. If the bill worth 50 pesos in 1970, what was its value in 1980? So, let's analyze the problem. The value of an old peso bill appreciates. So, ibig sabihin ng appreciates plus nag-i-increase yung kanyang value 
ng 5% kada year na lumalap na doon lumalagpas. So if the bill worth 50 pesos, kung yung 50 pesos daw worth niya or yung value niya sa 1970, yung bill na 50 pesos, yun yung value niya ng 1970. Ano na ba yung value niya pagdating ng 1980? Pero yung una nga natin i-identify dito class is uh, ano ba siya? Under ba siya ng arithmetic sequence o ni geometric sequence? So for us to identify that, let's focus in this part. Kasi nga 50 pesos sa nung 1970, ano na yung value niya sa 1980? So paano ba natin malalaman kung ano yung value niya sa 1980? Dito tayo mag-base. Philippine peso bill appreciates by 5% every year. Pag nag-mean tayo plus ng uh, appreciates by 5% per, uh, percent, it means nag increase siya ng 5%. So, baano ba natin na-apply yung increase ng uh, na percentage? So, by using multiplication. So, yung percentage siya, gawin nyo muna siyang decimal number, then multiply natin siya sa base natin or sa first term natin na 50 pesos. Dahil multiplication yung kailangan natin dito gamitin, it means under siya, yung given problem natin is under ng geometric sequence. Dahil under siya ng geometric sequence, it means yung solution natin, yung first thing na isosolve muna natin is yung common ratio. Para masolve si common ratio, kailangan muna natin is specify yung mga given. So yung given dito sa problem is A sub 1 or the first term is equal to 50 pesos or 50. So bakit ba A sub 1 yung is equal to 50? Kasi class, yung first term corresponds to the year 1970. Then after that, so, bakit ba nakuha natin yung N equals to 11? Kasi from 1970 class, mag-count kayo ng 1970 to 1980, yung magiging sagot dyan is 11. So, 1970, 1971, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 1980. So, 11 yung answer. So, it means yung N natin is equal to 11. So, happy nga dito, 11 term corresponds to year 1980. Then, to identify the A sub 2 class dito, ulit tayo sa problem. So, 50 pesos siya ng 1970. So, ito yung A sub 1 natin, right? So, the A sub 1, mag add lang tayo ng uh, yung na-increase na value. So, appreciates by 5% every year. So, the A sub 1 times the increase or the appreciation of the Philippine peso bill, which is 5%. So, time I change to decimal number, it will become 0 0.05. So, 50 times 0 0.05, the answer is 2.5. Then, add it to 50 to the A sub 1. So, 50 plus 2.5, the answer is 52.5. So, the value of the A sub 2 class is equal to 52.5. Dahil meron na tayong A sub 1 at A sub 2, Pwede na natin gamitin itong two terms or two consecutive terms to identify the common ratio. So, ito yung common ratio natin. Common ratio is equal to a sub 2 divided by a sub 1. Just simply substitute the values of, the, of a sub 1 and a sub 2 to the formula. So, ratio is equal to 52.5 divided by 50. The common ratio is equal to 1.05. So, after finding the common ratio, yung i-analyze naman natin plus Ano ba yung kailangan nating isolve under the geometric sequence? Yung common ratio lang ba? Yung arith ano ba or, uh, yung kailangan natin yung nth term of the geometric sequence ba? Yung formula ba ng finite geometric series or yung infinite geometric series? So based from our here's the main question here sa ating problem, what was its value in 1980? So based from the problem, hindi naman tayo naghahanap ng total ng value or nung uh, total number ng na uh, increase every year till na reach yung 1980 ng 50 peso bill from 1970 to 1980 hindi naman siya nagtataka about total so it means x na si series it's either finite or geometric series then si common ratio plus sinod talaga natin kasi commonly si common ratio uh, lagi, uh, most of that, uh, lagi siyang kailangan sa different formulas. Depende na lang kung common ratio lang yung kailangan. Pero pag yung kailangan natin is the arithmetic uh, geometric series or the nth term of the geometric sequence, kailangan natin si common ratio. Pero dito nga, sabi dito, naka-specify lang siya eh. What was its value in 1980? So yung kailangan lang natin, plus, ano na ba yung magiging value ng 50 pesos pagdating ng 1980? So naka-specify lang siya. 
So, it means yung kailangan natin ditong formula class is the end term of the geometric sequence. So, for us to be able to use the formula of the end term of the geometric series, we need to identify the given para magamit yung formula. So, we need the value of the a sub 1 or the first term, the common ratio, and the end that we're in given na siya. So, a sub 1 is equal to 50. The common ratio is equal to 1.05. And the n is equal to 11. Again, class, bakit ba yung a sub 1 natin is equal to 50? Kasi based from the problem, 50 pesos in 1970, yan yung starting point. Then yung common ratio natin, sinold natin, nakuha natin si 1.05. Yung n natin, bakit ba siya 11? Kasi... Mag-count kayo from 1970 to 1980. Si 1980 is the 11th term of the given sequence. Then, copy the formula. So, a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to n minus 1. Substitute the value. So, a sub 11 is equal to 50 times 1.05 raised to 11 minus 1. Apply the PEMDAS rule. So, parenthesis. Sa so, loob ng parenthesis, wala na kailangan isolve. So, let's check kung merong may exponent. So, merong may exponent. Then, yung exponent kailangan pa natin is simplify. So, just simply uh, subtract 11 and 1. So, 11 minus 1, the answer is 10. Dahil na simplify na si exponent, pwede na natin is isolve yung term na naka-place exponent. So, 1.05 raised to 10, the answer will be 50 times 1.63. Then, multiply the two numbers. So, the a sub 11 is approximately equal uh, is approximately equal to 81.5. The conclusion, the value of the bill in 1980 was 81.50 pesos. Kung napansin nyo dito, class, dito sa part na to ng sa final answer natin, approximate sa inyo may kita nyo. Approximation pa lang. Kasi class, every year, hindi naman kung sa real life tayo magbibase, hindi naman kasi fix yung 5% every year, yung appreciation ng all Philippine peso bill. Nakadepende kasi sa marketing, nakadepende yan sa, uh, sa economy natin. Kung okay ba yung economy or medyo nalulugin, so magpap, uh, magbabago yung appreciation every year. Kaya approximation lang siya. Pero syempre, paggawa nyo ng conclusion, the value of the bill in 1980 was 81.50 pesos. So that's all for the example number 2. So here is the activity you need to answer for lesson number 4. Let's practice on page 190 to 191. You are only uh, you just need to answer numbers 1 to 5 and 14 to 16. So 1 2 3 4 5 14 15 16 a total of 8 items only. Again yung sasagutan niyo lang yung 1 to 5 and 14 to 16. So 8 items lang siya. Show your solution class and box your final answer kung pwede lang. Pero okay lang kahit wala. Basta naka-klaro lang siya. And before I end this video lesson, here is a quotation for you before I end this video lesson nga. So just because we can't find a solution, it doesn't mean that there isn't one. If this quotation is applicable in your case sa pag-answer ng lesson 4. Kasi there are times na marireach nyo na yung part sa tingin nyo, lalo na pag hindi nyo nakuha yung right answer, wala naman siguro sa sagot to. Or baka nagka-error yung book. Always remember, dahil hindi dahil hindi nyo na ganang kuha yung solution or yung final answer, doesn't mean wala siyang sagot. You just need to apply, try and try till you get the final answer. Then don't forget to perform checking. And also, this quotation is applicable in real life. If there are times that we meet problems in our life na hindi agad natin nasusolusyonan or masolusyonan man, napakahirap isipan ng pinakatamang solusyon. So yung ginagawa natin, right, is not, we should not give up that easily. Try and try nga, do your best until you mag-succeed kayo. So good luck in answering your activities. Thank you for listening. And yeah, sabi nga ni Gojo, thanks. So class, it's a wrap.